In a dark cellar under the destroyed reactor 4 in Chernobyl lies an object that is deadly just by looking at it. A few minutes near it would be enough to make you incurably ill. This black molten mass is not only one of the most dangerous objects on our planet, but also holds the dark secrets of the nuclear disaster. Make sure to stick around until the end to see spectacular original footage of the infamous elephant foot. Welcome everyone. When Reactor 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded on April 26, 1986, something happened that had only been theoretically possible before, an event that would change the world forever. Today, there are even tourist tours to Chernobyl. Let me know in the comments if you would go on one of these tours or if you would say, no, better not take the risk. However, this object that we're talking about today cannot be visited on these tours either. The explosion of the reactor was so powerful that it literally blew away the several thousand ton heavy lid of the reactor and tore open the reactor building. Due to the immense heat of the nuclear meltdown, we are talking about temperatures above 2000 degrees, the fuel rods began to melt. Imagine this, nuclear fuel that gets so hot it flows through the facility like lava. And this nuclear lava, which scientists later called corium, is one of the most wicked substances ever created by mankind. It was created when the molten uranium fuel mixed with other materials in the reactor. Zirconium from the fuel rod cladding, concrete from the walls, steel from the structures. The result, a highly radioactive mixture that ate its way through the lower floors of the reactor building. The immense heat and radioactivity of this mass made it nearly impossible to investigate it directly. Scientists could only make assumptions from a safe distance and rely on simulations. It was only after some time, when the radiation slowly decreased, that more detailed investigations could be carried out. It turned out that the corium not only consisted of fuel residues and reactor material, but that chemical reactions had also occurred that had created new, previously unknown compounds. These processes were so unique that the researchers even had to introduce new terms for these materials. And so the famous elephant's foot was born. About two days after the explosion, this molten mass flowed into a room beneath the reactor, room 217-2. There, it slowly cooled and solidified, forming this nightmarish structure that, due to its wrinkled gray surface and massive shape, resembles an elephant's foot. Although I imagine real elephant's feet to be much sweeter and more pleasant, in the days immediately after its formation, the elephant's foot emitted about 10,000 rentgens per hour, do you know what that means? Just 500 Röntgens over a period of 5 hours means almost certain death? A single stay of only 200 seconds near this mass would be enough to die within a few days. The cumulative radiation dose would be comparable to about 4.5 million chest x-rays. All at once? That would be an interesting case for the liability insurance of the radiology department in the hospital. By the way, if you like the video so far, feel free to subscribe to the channel now. Don't miss any new videos again and help me immensely. Thanks a lot, guys. Yes, but how do you investigate something that you can't even enter without dying? The researchers were forced to come up with innovative solutions. First, they had to figure out where the nuclear fuel was located. They sent cameras on remote-controlled carts into the contaminated areas and thus discovered this eerie formation for the first time. When they tried to take samples, they encountered another problem. The elephant's foot was incredibly hard. A remote-controlled drill could not penetrate the glass-like surface. So what do you do when conventional methods fail? You use unconventional methods. After several failed attempts, including an impulsive soldier who struck the mass with an axe and exposed himself to a dangerous dose of radiation, a radical solution was found. They shot at the elephant's foot with a Kalashnikov rifle to obtain samples. Did it work? An analysis of these samples revealed that they were a strange black ceramic, mostly silicon dioxide fused with uranium oxides and other radioactive isotopes. About 10% of the mass is uranium, and it was found not just in one room, but in several areas under the destroyed reactor. In total, scientists estimate that about 170 tons of nuclear material is located under the reactor spread over more than 1,700 tons of molten mass. What is fascinating about the elephant's foot is how it has changed over time. In early photos, it had a metallic sheen and a firm structure, but continuous radiation has changed its consistency. Over time, cracks formed, the shine disappeared, and today, more than 35 years later, it has, according to scientists, more or less the consistency of sand. However, I strongly advise against building sand castles from this material. Has it become safe because of that? Not at all. 
Although the radiation has dropped to about one-tenth of its original level, still deadly with prolonged contact, the change in structure presents new dangers as the substance breaks down into dust that could become airborne and be inhaled. While alpha radiation typically can't penetrate skin, it's especially dangerous if radioactive particles are inhaled or swallowed. Incidentally, we have the courage of individuals to thank for the most famous images of the elephant's foot. Particularly noteworthy is the story of Arthur Korniev, a Kazakh Russian nuclear expert who was assigned the task of finding the missing fuel in the depths of Chernobyl and measuring radiation levels. In 1996, when the radiation had already subsided somewhat, he ventured into the room with a camera and took that ghostly picture that many of you may have seen before. A blurred man with a flash in front of the black mass and the grainy structure of the photo is not due to a bad camera, by the way. It is the radiation itself that has affected the film. Korniliev is said to have later spoken about his work in Chernobyl at the age of 65. We were the trailblazers. We were always at the forefront. And with grim humor, he adds, Soviet radiation is the best radiation in the world. Today, the elephant's foot is enclosed in the so-called sarcophagus that was built over the destroyed reactor. Since 2016, there's even a new improved shell called the New Safe Confinement. It is supposed to ensure that no radiation escapes from the building for the next hundred years. However, the elephant's foot remains a constant challenge for science. It is still slowly melting into the ground beneath Chernobyl and could eventually contaminate the groundwater. While its outer layer continues to disintegrate, it continues to produce heat through the continuous nuclear decay reaction inside. The story of the elephant's foot is truly a haunting reminder of the power and dangers of nuclear fission, but at the same time it shows the courage and determination of the people who risk their lives to understand and contain the effects of the disaster. This eerie mass of molten uranium, concrete and metal, hidden in the dark basements of Chernobyl, reminds us how important it is to treat the power we have over nature with responsibility. The elephant's foot is not just a monument to a past disaster, it is somehow a continuous reminder not to underestimate the forces we unleash. I will, of course, keep you updated on all future developments in Chernobyl. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel now. Speaking of mysterious phenomena, my new video is about an incredible discovery that scientists have recently made. Strange plasma bubbles were discovered above the Egyptian pyramids. Sounds like something out of Stargate, but it's reality. You can find out all about it in the video in the top right hand corner. Be sure to click on it, and in the bottom right hand corner, as always, you will find a video that the algorithm has selected for you. Otherwise, I would say see you in the next video. Take care, folks.